rapper Al McLean in the 90s. AJ? Yes. What did I say, Al? It'd be a whole different story if one of the Backstreet Boys... Roy, listen, the vision is going on me. I don't know what to tell you. And again, I haven't read these in a while. I mean, you know. I think it's McLean, too. I think I know, McLean It says McLean, is... McLean, tomato, tomato. It says McLean. Uh, the night lady. It says AJ McLean. <laughs> <laughs> he made him Al McLean. <laughs> now I'm just imagining Die Hard as Al McLean from Backstreet Boys. <laughs> I don't know what it is to do. That's not even like... It's not even a big name. Like, uh, my guy, you're just right. Two uh, letters. You're right. They're both in caps. They are both in caps. Ow. This oh. is the Dan Levatar show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. It's a capital J. up i sit in front of all of these squares where i can see the people with whom i do this show and all across them there are all sorts of different conversations going on first of all billy is confused because he's wondering whether uh, america should come together or stay apart he feels like we're getting a lot of mixed messages from people he's also trying to avoid people on the rare instances that he goes outside in such a zealous way that he's not looking into oncoming traffic. So there have been a couple of instances where he's almost been hit by a car. Chris, Chris is getting offended that people are walking away from him whenever he's outside, but he's holding his breath so he can't say anything to them because he's walking around holding his breath. Right. And Stu Gatz claims that he hasn't swallowed in a couple of hours, that he's trying to... <laughs> I'm he's scared to, to swallow, man. I mean, that one time you swallow and you feel that little itch, that little pain, That's that could be it. I mean... Well, on another front, though, as everyone fights over toilet paper and canned goods, uh, Stu Gatz has decided to fight with Mike over his hair, over his hair cut. Mike, do you want to explain <laughs> what this has been like the last few days where you and you and Stu Gatz keep going back and forth? Because we've got Stu Gatz, whenever Jorge Masvidal fights again, the joke that we have, are we going to tell people what the joke is? Have we told people already what the joke is? Yeah, we can, we can tell people the, uh, the actual gag that we're going for. It's been a tension for a few months. The problem is, all right, we already have Jorge Masvidal on board, and we've been told the next time he goes out there for a fight, Sugats will be there by his side. The UFC has enough heads up on this. The last time Sugats was there for the weigh-in, it was great social media content. It was really funny, but the real payoff is to have Sugats walk out to the octagon with Jorge Masvidal. We've been confirmed on that for months now, waiting for Jorge Masvidal to take the next fight. And he was on a really long delay for a UFC fighter. And now with COVID-19, it's an extra long delay. Our whole gag with Stugatz was, you need to walk out to the octagon with Jorge Masvidal looking like Jorge Masvidal. You need to have cornrows too. (laughs) It's going to be an unbelievable gag. He agrees. But for weeks now, he's complaining that he's not allowed to cut his hair (laughs) because his hair needs to be a certain length to get the extensions to be able to pull off this gag. And all he's doing is complaining, and I believe him to have already had at least one haircut in the time since. I have not had a single haircut. My my hair also needs to be a certain length for me to enjoy Sunday nights with my wife. And we are arriving at a place where it is too long for her to invite me into the bedroom on Sunday nights. She does not like this look. I have not cut a single piece of hair, Mike Ryan. Not a single piece of hair, and I will let it grow against my better judgment because we have no idea. I'm assuming once sports resumes, all the fights that were on the court are going to get pushed back. Masvidal doesn't even have a next fight on the calendar, and I'm assuming he won't fight for like another year. I mean, this is insane, Mike, what you're making well, me do. But this is what I don't understand about you, Stugat. You gave up a long time ago. You got you got hair in your ear and <laughs> nose <do>. that requires <laughs> trimming. Um, and I don't believe that this has anything to do with your wife and the glory of Sunday nights. Yeah, this yeah. this <laughs> is such a weird tipping point. Your wife has already overcome so much when it comes to you, yeah, but it true. stops when your hair reaches a certain <laughs> length. I don't believe you. <laughs> well, Mike, if you notice, you can wife. see me right. I, I normally shave on. Sunday nights because Sunday night is the night and if you noticed I have not shaved. What does shaving your face have to do with you growing your hair out? 
Mike, why shave my face? Because now it's about the hair on top of my head. It's not about the facial hair. And she's like, listen, <laughs> shave if you want. But, you know, Sunday night is not happening this Sunday night. And so nothing happened last night. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> You're killing my sex this. life, Mike. I, I refuse to believe this. This is just a weird. This I have to give it credit. Give you credit. This is one of the weirder excuses you formulated in your brain. But I don't believe that your wife is simply not having sex with you because your hair is of a certain length. When look at you. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I, I want to ask you guys a question here. We got Seth Wickersham joining us at 11 a.m. and he basically told us everything that was happening with the Patriots before it happened. But Stu, guys, have you been to a grocery store since all of this started? Yeah, I, uh, I've been there a couple of times, and uh, it's awkward. It is. Like, everyone, we're in this weird judgmental zone, man, where I'm walking through Publix, and people are judging me, and I'm judging them. <laughs> I'm trying to see if they have symptoms, and they're certainly checking me out to see if I have any of the symptoms. And so, yeah, I've, I've been to Publix a couple of times. We probably need to talk to an expert again about, like, what the dangers are in, like, grabbing a gas nozzle or using a debit machine or any of that sort of stuff. Uh, but I wanted to ask you this. The reason I ask you this question, Stugatz, is because when you go to the grocery store, you have seen uh, these these long places where it's barren, where there there's nothing, right? Where yeah. there's, uh, you know, pasta. It happens around the pasta. It obviously happens around the disinfectants and around toilet paper and and paper towels and i feel like that's where the patriots are sort of searching for quarterbacks like they just found one can of hoyer they don't have anything else they're like going all over the place and all that's available to them is the things that they don't want to eat like the reckless and inconsistent cam newton or Jameis winston like oh they're, they're looking and they're like well i don't want to that's not what i want i don't want to get any of any of that and i don't know what they're going to do at quarterback, and I keep wondering what they're going to do at quarterback, as Mike Greenberg outraged all six of our boxes because he has claimed on get up. He said the thing. Tom Brady will play in a Super Bowl again before Bill Belichick coaches in one. Yeah. And uh, the quarterbacks who are available to them, because they are a precision offense, because you think of them as being very careful with the football and very smart with the football, Jameis Winston and Cam Newton aren't what you would want there. So who else who else do you go with on that front? Well, I guess it's it's either Stidham or or I guess Hoyer, but the Jameis one confuses me because it's five thousand yards, it's thirty three touchdowns, and I realize the thirty interceptions. Hey, but you can't keep glossing over that one. No, it's no, why I'm he's not. gonna be a backup now. Just hear me out though. But if if Brady, I mean, if Belichick and McDaniels are these genius coaches that we make them out to be, they'll figure out a way to limit those interceptions. They'll figure out a way to make it not 33 and 30, but maybe 33 and 20. And I think Belichick can win with 33 and 20. I do. But they're also genius personnel people over in New England. And True. I think we're probably selling them short if we're just saying the options are Cam Newton and Jameis Winston. Perhaps he answer is on someone else's roster i saw one sports book had the opening day at quarterback starting quarterback for the patriots favorite as deshaun watson because bill o'brien is a madman over in houston so i would say that give bill belichick some time and you've, he's got plenty now as the world has sort of stopped and he'll find the answer even if it's not one that you're thinking about let me ask you this question as it regards bill o'brien's to god so one of the reasons that people were bothered by how silly that trade seemed is at least in part because Bill O'Brien doesn't seem to have the kind of pedigree that you would say or that anyone listening would say, hey, there is a coach whose side I would take when he is jettisoning a tremendous talent. Like that guy doesn't have the resume to not get along with a tremendous talent. And the thing I wanted to ask you is how many coaches in that league actually do? How many coaches in that league would you say to yourself, yeah, I'm siding with the coach in this instance when he's running off a tremendous talent? And I don't think you can do this with just championship coaches because I'm not sure I'd give that leeway to Sean Payton. Would you? Would you give that? I would give Ooh. that leeway to very, very few coaches where if you have a top line, top three player at his at a skilled position, where I'm going to say that guy. Now, Bill O'Brien certainly doesn't have that resume, but I'm no. wondering how many guys do. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, obviously Belichick. Uh, maybe. I'm not certain. There's another one, Mike Tomlin. Maybe 
I mean, maybe Mike Tomlin is Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan arriving at that place where if he lets you go, it means you're probably not good or he can find something better. I mean, there's not many, Dan, if, if any, besides Belichick. Credit but I'll side with Belichick every time. Credit to you for thinking of Tomlin because it actually happened and Pittsburgh seemed to survive it. If the playoffs were expanded, they would have found themselves in that final slot. But I think it's just Belichick. And, I mean, you're pressing hard to find a second name. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance with insurance for cars, homes, boats, motorcycles, RVs, and commercial vehicles at 1-800-PROGRESSIVE and progressive.com. Here's your Sports Center update. Canada will not send its athletes to the Olympics in Tokyo unless the games are postponed by one year amid concerns over the coronavirus pandemic. Meanwhile, the International Olympic Committee announced that it imposed a four-week deadline to make a decision on whether to postpone the Olympics, Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said that a postponement would be unavoidable if the Games cannot be held in a complete way due to the athlete's safety. The satisfying crunch of Nature Valley Crunchy Bars can help keep your family going, which means more outside fun for you. And with whole grain oats and real delicious honey, it's really tasty too. Nature Valley Oats and Honey Crunchy Bars. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Don Lebatard. I mean, they used to call me Chris Karaoke. Stugatz. That back row is bringing it today. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Dreams at Casper.com now through March 26. Terms and conditions apply. See Casper.com slash terms. So, Stugatz, what were you guys just doing during the break? I heard you guys talking about a quarterback aisle, trying to create at the grocery store a quarterback aisle. Um, and you guys were discussing, uh, you know, Brian Hoyer is just he, – he's just a can of green beans, right? Like it's uh, they're paying a million dollars a year. It's not fresh produce. It's not anything. It's not even a, it's a can of green beans, but it's not even a good can of green beans. It's just a can of green beans that's been kicked up and down the aisle a little bit, and it's the last remaining uh, a can of green beans. What else were you guys doing with that? Well, we were laughing because you painted such a beautiful visual of us walking into a supermarket. You did this in the first segment, and there being a quarterback aisle. And you walk through the aisle, and – you know, there's only one Tom Brady, but behind it, after someone takes Brady off the rack, behind it, what is there is just an endless sea of Brian Hoy- uh, Hoyers and Jared Stidham's. Uh, there's only one Patrick Mahomes. He is lock and key. He's like a razor at the uh, at the pharmacy. Okay. What, what are those things at the pharmacy that get put away? Right. The things that get put away at the pharmacy are generally the things that get stolen so that people can like mix them with meth and stuff and make drugs. Right. <laughs> yes. That's that's what the Mahomes thing is. Right. And I'm yes. always confused. I'm always confused. I'm like, why is this expensive toothpaste behind lock and key? And it's because someone can make meth with it. I think. And then Cam Newton, there is, there's a Cam Newton there, and you can have him, but you never know when he's going to expire. And, in fact, you can't figure it out at the supermarket. The only way to figure it out is to buy Cam Newton, take him home, open it up, have a glass of Cam Newton, and see if it's sour or not because there's no way of checking <laughs> on these things. I mean, that's it. <laughs> you, guys, uh, you guys have been, uh, like, offended. Is Chris the one who's been most offended by the behavior of – Others, uh, Chris, who did you get mad at the other day because they were walking near you? A couple was walking near you and they just split because you came walking through? Well, yeah, during during this time, I'm actually doing more walking than I've been doing in months. So I was walking with my family and we're walking and I see 100 yards away, another family coming. I'm like, all right, we're going to walk by each other. We're going to hold our breath. It's going to be nice. And this family made a big circle and they crossed the street to avoid me. And I got offended by it. I'm like, what are you doing? What, I, you don't know I have it. We can do this. We can walk by safely. You don't need to cross the street. I, I, I was offended. No, Nathan, sorry. You don't want to get too close to people. In fact, 
I, I, as you mentioned, Dan, I've walked into the street trying to avoid people without looking both ways, as you always should when you cross the street, obviously. Um, and I feel like I'm being very judgmental, but I think in this time, the way that you show you really care about yourself, your family, and other people is treat other people horribly. No eye contact, no nods, nothing. Even if a conversation from like 10 feet away is going on a little long, it's like, ah, thanks, I'm glad you're doing well, but I gotta, I gotta go, buddy. Like, honestly, <laughs> I've, I've done the thing under my breath, no lie, where like, so I have to walk my dog. It's not that we're leaving the house at all, trust me. But I have to walk my dog because my dog's selfish and needs to do his business outside. And I'm walking around and I get to like corners and I'll be like jaywalking in the middle of the streets trying to avoid people. If I see them walking on the other side of the street where I'm coming, I'm like racing against cars. I'm like, I think we can beat this one. We don't want to run into this person across the street. And then you'll go and someone will be on the corner and they see that it's me, my wife, my dog. And they're just like walking around like joy walking or whatever it's called. I don't know what joy riding and walking with me. They're doing that. <laughs> and I see them. And then they have no consideration for me whatsoever when I have all these things that I'm trying to balance and walk around. And then they just jet out and I'll do, you know, I'll do the thing, Dan. We've all done it. We're under my breath. I'm just like, bleep. And I just insult the person under my breath. I'm like, what a bleep, that person. And then I keep walking. But I know they're probably not going to punch me, right? Because then if I'm sick, they'll get it on themselves. So it's kind of like a safe time. I wouldn't say it too loud because I don't want to get hit. But I also, you know, I'm very frustrated very frustrated and i've been doing this thing now that we're on the subject Dan. thank you for asking i've been doing this thing where instead of taking the elevator of my building i'll take the stairs but the stairs lock on the outside so i have to play this game where i put my sandal and catch the door before it closes because i'm not going to grab the handle to stop the door from closing obviously so i have to kind of catch the door and have it slam on my foot so that it'll stay slightly ajar so when i come back from the walk it's still open the other day this guy I'm walking up the stairs. He walks out of the third floor of the garage, walks out, and I, I still have a couple floors to go, but he walks out, and I'm seeing, and I realize, this guy closed the door. I've been walking around for 20 minutes. I slammed the door on my foot so the door would stay open so I wouldn't have to touch anything, and now this guy closed the door, and now I have to take an elevator. And you know what the elevator situation's like where I'm at, Dan? I'll tell you. Thanks for asking. The elevator situation has little fake feet pasted onto the floor in each corner of the elevator and that's where they expect you to stand there's caution tape with cutouts of feet and they want you to put your feet inside these feet in the elevator so no one's too close to the other people except there's too many of us and my dog i don't know if your dog's like this has four feet so my dog can't put his four feet on top of two feet and then there's too many people in the elevator and i tried to avoid this entire situation and i couldn't do it because one selfish person decided to slam the door that i left open half an hour before what are we talking about? Chris, you wanted to get in three minutes ago. Uh, what is we it that you want to do? Billy mentioned how we should avoid the head nods. I feel like we need these head nods more than anything right now. Don't breathe on me. Don't actually audibly speak to me. But when we walk by, I think we need some eye contact and a good head nod just so we both know we're in this together. I know what you're doing. You're walking because we're all walking for the same reason. It's, it's hard out here. I need a head nod, a nice little smile as you pass by. It's made everyone totally crazy. You remember after 9-11, there were all sorts of civil liberties being trampled, and we didn't know how to protect ourselves, and fear was, was ruling the day. And then the next thing you know, some guy, despite all of this excessive security, guy gets on a plane and is trying to light his shoe he's trying again and again to light his shoe because he's got a bomb in his shoe and we weren't checking shoes at the time and he didn't do it successfully he was incompetent and then all of a sudden we started testing crazily shoes because we didn't know that we needed to be testing shoes i'm sitting there looking at this video coming in from hollover beach where all of these miamians are like crammed on top of each other because we have had six wonderful apocalyptic days out here like it's been beautiful out here and so everybody was stacked on each other at hollover park and then all our city officials slap their forehead and say okay never mind you're not allowed to do that anymore i don't <laughs> think we're handling any of this right tell the people stugats about advanced auto parts advanced auto parts continues to support the show during a difficult time tell the people why it is that they need to be supporting advanced auto parts you can uh, get to Advanced Auto Parts. You could go online and order your parts today. Tell them how, Stu Gatz. Yep, now more than ever, it's important to think ahead. Advanced Auto Parts remains open to help you keep your car up and running at its best. Order online and then pick up in the store so you can get in and out quickly. Car batteries are in stock, starting at just $79.99. 
They'll test your old battery and install your new one for free. No appointment necessary. Enter the code DAN20 when you buy online, and you'll save an extra 20%. That's DAN20 when you buy online to save 20%. Think ahead. Think advance. Only at Advance Auto Parts. Don Lebatard. Guillermo pulled out a receipt that he's got in his desk. Look at the length of it. Oh, my gosh. What's the matter with you, Guillermo? How, how, the how, me. How, <laughs> I didn't lying, print man. this receipt. Why do you still have the receipts? I put it in my pocket. What so if I get audited? Stugats. Tell the radio audience how long that receipt is. It's easily over a yard. I'd say maybe two. No, it's not two yards. That receipt costs more to, in the, uh, to the environment than your orange juice. It's the length of a Jarvis Landry catch. <laughs> I, I think it's much longer than that. <laughs> That would be his longest career. Th- that is uh, Jarvis Landry's <laughs> longest career touchdown, the length of that receipt. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. The Dan Levitard Show is brought to you by Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline. All guests on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. Canada will not send its athletes to the Olympics in Tokyo unless the games are postponed by one year amid concerns over the coronavirus pandemic. Meanwhile, the International Olympic Committee announced that it imposed a four-week deadline to make a decision on whether to postpone the Olympics. Japan's Prime Minister, Shinzo Abe. I mean, it can't be Abe. That's not, that cannot be the name. Shinzo Abe. It's it's probably, it's probably Abe. It's not Abe. Okay, good. Uh, Shinzo said that a postponement would be unavoidable if the games cannot be held in a complete way due to the athlete's safety. And finally, Texas ranks number one in drinking the most alcohol during the coronavirus outbreak. Florida's got to be in the top five, right? It's, it has to be. It just has to be. Sports Center brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. Think ahead, think advance. At any time, one of four batteries is about to fail. Get a free battery test and free installation with any automotive battery purchase only at Advance Auto Parts. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Guillermo, put it on the poll, please. At Lebitard Show, are you secretly enjoying quarantine? Are you secretly loving quarantine? Because um, my freedom from responsibility and people has been a soothing, soothing blessing. Like You're I got a dream come true for the, you. I'm <laughs> telling you, the only thing that gets in the way of my bliss is interaction with others. <laughs> so I'm I'm like good with the idea that I don't have to see anyone or have any of those responsibilities. Now, that might not be the case in eight months when we all, including the women, look like Ben Roethlisberger. But for now, for now, I'm totally good. <laughs> um, I want, though, uh, I don't know if we can get this sound cleared because Stugat said that Vin Scully um, is soothing. He is soothing in these times of uh, trouble, even in his late 80s, that he is just a voice that you want to hear from. But also trying to soothe us at the moment via Twitter is Mike Francesa. Mike Francesa, always a fountain of perspective and nuance and warmth. And he writes, the bright side, when this is over, God willing, we will never complain about little things again. We will all appreciate how terrific our way of life is. Francesca, <laughs> 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 that's funny. <laughs> the Pope. <laughs> Mike. Oh, Mike. <laughs> Did you see my princesses say that if everyone just followed like his suggestions, we could be done with this by April 6th? Of course. <laughs> yep. Yep. He, yep. Um, how can he be prisoner of the moment about even this? <laughs> about even this? It's what makes him great, Dan. It's what makes him the sports pope. Um, Seth Wickersham is going to join us here at 11 o'clock Eastern. He has been really informed, unusually informed, given 
how uh, tight the Patriots can be in terms of getting their information. And Seth Wickersham is an ESPN senior writer. And there are a couple of things he's already said as we lead you up to this conversation that's going to be in a half hour. But let's hear first from Seth Wickersham on how, how after two decades, Brady was pretty much done with the Patriot way. It's a hard system to be in. I mean, the coaching that, um, you know, he endured and, you know, this isn't new, but it's, you know, it's a lot of grief to put up with for that long as you're winning three, four, five, six Super Bowls. And I think, you know, Robert Kraft made kind of a clumsy analogy to being in a marriage, but wanting to leave the marriage because you couldn't stand the in-laws. And that's kind of what he meant. I mean, he, at the end of the day, the, the relationship between Bill Belichick and Tom Brady and the contract, which was the dividing line, was just irreparable. I saw some reporting out of Tampa Bay, Stugatz, where when Brady was talking to management in Tampa Bay, he was doing most of the talking. It was 90 minutes of him having already done the research on who their skill guys were and just asking a whole bunch of questions. But here is Seth Wickersham also talking about the other teams that may have been interested in Tom Brady. Yeah, so that's one of the most interesting things is that, like, what kind of market do he actually have? And to be honest with you, I'm still kind of sorting it out. But it seemed kind of dry at the end of the day. I think a lot of teams were interested in him, um, but they couldn't tell. He was kind of running his own thing, putting out feelers on his own. Teams didn't know if he actually had a plan. It seemed like he was more driven by animus towards Belichick than it was leaving the Patriots. It was almost as if he wanted leverage to – force Robert Kraft to step in. We will talk, as I said, with Seth Wickersham at 11 a.m. Eastern. Somebody else who did some very good reporting on everything around the pages, Jeff Darlington. In fact, at some point here when we all return to work and can be near each other, I'm going to be either shocked or stunned by Jeff Darlington because our show lost a bet, and last week he came on and chose me as the one who was going to be shocked and stunned because he reported initially that he would be shocked or stunned if Tom Brady returned to the Patriots. Here's Jeff Darlington talking on the 8 a.m. Sports Center about the idea of Antonio Brown. Now, Dominique Foxworth called this story baloney. Actually, he called it Bologna. How do you pronounce it? Put it on the poll, Guillermo, at Lebetard Show. Baloney or Bologna? What do you have, Stu Gatz? Bologna. Okay, so here is Jeff Darlington talking on the 8 a.m. Sports Center about the potential of Antonio Brown joining uh, all those other players in Tampa Bay. Brady, from what I understand, has been very supportive of Brown, almost in some capacity, a little bit of a mentor, trying to help him behind the scenes to just stay focused and try to try to get you know things in order. But the one thing I would point out here is, first of all, uh, Antonio Brown has a lot of obstacles in, in his own way before he is reinstated uh, in any capacity with the NFL. So that in itself should keep us from speculating too much about that potential. What do you think about that, Stugatz? What do you think about the the idea of Antonio Brown joining Godwin and Mike Evans there? Um, I mean, it would take a an already you know good offense and and make them ridiculous. I mean, think about having Godwin, Evans, O.J. Howard, Cameron Brait throw in Antonio Brown. Plus, you have the greatest quarterback uh, we've ever seen. I think. Listen, I don't know defensively, but offensively, I think they'll be. Even without Antonio Brown, Dan, they'll be as good as anyone in the NFL next year. I really do believe that. And in terms of Brady in, you know, in the overall situation here and why maybe there wasn't a market for Tom Brady, maybe it was clear to everyone for whatever reason. It doesn't make sense to me that he would want to finish this thing up uh, in Tampa Bay because their brand is so ridiculously bad. It's like you don't th when you think of great teams, you certainly don't think of the Bucs uh, anywhere in sports. When you think of great teams, the Bucs is not a team – that comes to mind. So, But maybe the other teams just simply knew that that's where Tom Brady wanted to go for whatever reason, did his research, liked the wide receivers. Stugatz, why, why would you convince yourself of that instead of the idea that other teams wouldn't want a quarterback who wasn't very good at 42 years old, who's about to turn 43, wasn't very good last year, and had the same uh, QBR as Jameis Winston? Why would you convince yourself of that? Well, because six months before last year, he outplayed Patrick Mahomes on the road in the AFC Championship game at Kansas City. He outplayed him. I, it didn't go that quickly. I don't think it went that quickly for Tom Brady. It did, it did I for really, Peyton did, Manning five years but, earlier, five years younger, it did. 
That's fair, Dan, but he really had no skill players around him last year. And I think Antonio Brown being taken away from that team really affected Tom Brady in a weird way. I think the only way, the only way that anyone can take Antonio Brown is if they're not relying on him. Like that, he would fit there in that sure. respect because they don't actually need him because they've got a couple of guys who feel like number one uh, receivers. And so the only way that any team could add an Antonio Brown is without giving him any responsibility or the burden of actually relying on him. You could lose him for one day to the next and it doesn't end up mattering. I wanted to talk to the group about some of the stuff they were watching on ESPN. I, I felt sad last night watching WrestleMania on ESPN. We will talk in a second. Uh, old, old, like, I don't think that the coronavirus really reached me until I saw them hawking uh, WrestleMania merchandise as part of the deal to get on ESPN on Sunday nights. Uh, we will talk about some of the other programming. Uh, we, ESPN two went straight to the last resort. Like, let's just make it the Ocho. We're just gonna we're, we're gonna make it the Ocho, and we're gonna have a bunch of rock skipping. We're gonna uh, televise the rock skipping championships. Well, ESPN went with every single Tom Brady Super Bowl. I mean, please. Jesus I uh, I saw that Tom Brady put on social media that his mother said that they were watching it, and that ESPN was behaving as if we thought they retired. <laughs> I think Tuesday's Peyton Manning Day. It is, yeah. Five-hour birthday celebration. <laughs> Stugatz Casper mattresses, we all have them. They're super comfortable. Tell the people why they need to support Casper mattresses. Yep, we've all heard of Casper, you know, the sleep company with outrageously comfortable products at not-so-outrageous prices. And with their current end-of-season clearance, you can save up to 20% of the mattress of your dreams. Save up to 20% on mattresses now through March 24th, 2020. Offer expires March 24th, 2020 at 11.59 p.m. Pacific. Save 10% off the Essential, 20% off the Casper, 20% off the Wave. Limit one offer per customer and order. Additional shipping fees apply for Hawaii and Alaska. Please see casper.com slash terms for additional terms and conditions. Don Lebatard. <laughs> you need to listen to Kushlash. What is that? Stugatz. Kushlash. 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 Wow. That, that cleared things up. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Seth Wickersham going to join us in about 12 minutes. If you missed any of our interviews, check them out on demand in the Dan Levitard Show podcast brought to you by Capital One Quicksilver Card. Earning unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase everywhere. Capital One, what's in your wallet? All guests on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance log. You saw that Bill Self tried to sneak in there between federal wiretaps and a pandemic to claim his championship, saying, hey, we are ranked very high. Maybe you should just give us the championship. There are a whole lot of teams right now, Stugatz, uh, that don't normally get any good publicity using the pandemic to get some good publicity. Daniel Snyder, we've, when's the last time you heard of Daniel Snyder doing the right thing in any way? When is the last time you heard someone saying that the Washington owner is someone who was doing the right thing, but he's allowing his field to be used for some coronavirus testing? And also, the Marlins are doing the same thing. The Marlins get precious, precious little good publicity, <laughs> but they're, uh, they're doing a good thing. They are allowing their field to be used for... Uh, for some of this testing, and uh, so that is a, a positive thing. If uh, at Marlins Park there's going to be uh, tests and supplies uh, arriving in Miami, I got to think, I don't know anything, right? We've got a lot of people who all of a sudden are experts on the coronavirus, but if California is, uh, is being hit that way in New York, and then you see all the stuff <laughs> going on in Florida where people are on top of each other and not actually respecting the distances until very, very recently. 
and even then, not much, given what the spring breakers are doing. I got to think that uh, we're all headed pretty sh- uh, pretty soon around here toward uh, toward being, uh, you know, quarantined. Before we get to Seth Wickersham, though, I wanted to talk to you about what it is that you were watching yesterday. I know a lot of people are watching that crazy uh, Tiger uh, movie or docu uh, series on Netflix, yeah. which is just the the fighting the infighting among uh you know some exotic animal owners uh what were you watching on espn because i'm not kidding you when i saw these two announcers in an antiseptic studio sort of talking about old wrestlemanias and then you know uh, shilling t-shirts it made me a little bit sad to see that on espn on sunday night they uh they uh, gave us the ocho yesterday and it was delightful. I know the guys watched some of it as well, but you had stuff like, you know, slippery stair climbing. I watched last night. I was glued because I am just jonesing for anything and it was a big part of my youth. I watched the rock skimming and it was fantastic. The rock skimming championships, Dan, and it was amazing. Great athletes I mean, one guy was unwilling to put his feet into the ocean, and I was yelling at my TV, if you're not willing to put your feet into the ocean, then you're not willing to win. You are soft. I mean, you got to do what you got to do. You have to become one with the elements when you're skimming rocks. Uh, Is it skimming rocks or skipping rocks? Put it on the poll, Guillermo, at Levitard Show. Is it skimming rocks or skipping rocks? What else did you end up seeing? Because if we're going to go back to old programming, what are some of the things you'd like to see? I'm... I would be in on these world's strongest man competitions that we used to watch a long time ago. We've got to have a library of those, you know, that was always Magnus Van Magnus son, you know, doing something. Um, <laughs> I would be I would be here for that. And uh, what is that old wrestling? Was it AWA wrestling? The old, old wrestling shows. I would be here for some of that. What what else? Like ESPN, how can you, it's so hard right now to find programming. I don't know what you do. I would, I'd be airing 30 for 30s all over the place if I could. Uh, They are doing that. The network stars. Can we do that? Can we just play that for a while? I think we have to negotiate all that stuff. I think that's what that, what ends up happening, where ESPN has to no, negotiate with, uh, for example, uh, wrestle the, for the WrestleMania footage. I Billy, would love a series of dunk there? contests. Like, I think, like, Billy, I'm not certain, like, Billy, Chris, and the younger people in our demographic have ever seen the Jordan Dominique Wilkins dunk contest. I think if you put it on, promoted it, I'd watch it. I'll watch it a thousand times. But I think, I think young kids who have never seen that, they would watch that. I think it would actually get very, very good ratings if they put on, like, the 86, 87, 88 slam dunk championships. Very good ratings, Dukats. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Rant. I'm serious. Monster Billy, ratings. When you watch the uh, European tram driver championships that includes trams crashing into balls, which makes them bowl over pins, like you'll watch just about anything. And I loved it. It was so great. <laughs> trams? Yeah, yeah. Trams, like the street trams that are attached on wires. They had different competitions to see who could stop the closest to a certain point. They had this giant ball that you crash into and it'd bowl over <laughs> pins. They were all kind of, I mean, the European tram. But I only wish that I could have seen the electrician competition, but it was on too early. I missed it. <laughs> so Seth Wickersham, as I've told you, uh, did some pretty exceptional reporting on all the things that were happening with the Patriots so that what ended up happening at the end wasn't that much of a surprise. He joins us next. Don Lebertard. You getting started on the breakfast flan? Oh, man. I've been singing the song to myself all morning long. Breakfast flan. Stugats. Have you never heard the breakfast flan no, song? No, hit me with it. Okay. I wish I had some breakfast flan. Breakfast flan. Where can I find a breakfast like that? This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance, making it easy to bundle your home and car insurance. Seth Wickersham going to join us in just a minute here on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. 
The Patriots have signed Brian Hoyer to a one-year deal. Suspended Cowboys defensive end Randy Gregory has filed for reinstatement. And finally, under stay-at-home orders amid the coronavirus outbreak, people scattered throughout the Chicago metro area, belted out Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer Saturday night, standing at windows and yards and on balconies in freezing weather. Here's the select quote difference. Most companies give you one option, one policy, one rate, but select quote shops, it could get you up to 10 options from highly rated life insurance companies for a free personalized quote. It's simple. Call 800-780-1010 or go to selectquote.com today. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. I've seen on an Italian balcony a tenor uh, sing to his neighbors. I've seen a trainer on a roof uh, making folks exercise on their balconies. And I've seen a man with a gallon jug that was empty hit his wife who was playing uh, the flute with the gallon jug because she was playing it so poorly. This uh, brings people together. It tears them apart. I don't mean to alarm anybody, but I remain concerned about the beak the beef stroganoff that Chris uh, left in the Clevelander fridge (laughs) 10 days ago. Uh, Seth Wickersham uh, joins us now on ESPN Radio. What do you have, Billy? So I I went over the weekend because I had to send myself some sound, and I remembered, hey, I left a Lunchable in there. Let me get that out so that it doesn't go bad and smell up the fridge. And then I realized after I left that I threw it into a garbage can that's not going to be changed for months so instead of it being refrigerated and contained, it's now in an open garbage can where it's oh. rotting even faster and it's going to be a worse smelling thing. Okay, oh. very good. Thank oh. you, Billy. We appreciate it. That's what we're going to be returning to. Uh, Seth Wickersham with us, and he's done much of this reporting on uh, the Patriots. Uh, I don't know if I want to call it dysfunction. Do I want to call it dysfunction, Seth? Thank you for joining it. Was it dysfunction at the end? <laughs> I don't think it's dysfunction. I just think that everything kind of ran its course. I mean, that's kind of it. I don't, I don't know. I, I would never classify it as dysfunctional, though. Is it ego? It's so – there's so many extremes going on here that I don't exactly know how if – it, if it is ego. You know, it's like you have Tom Brady, who's been so public and so earnest in his declaration to play until his mid-40s. That just doesn't happen that often. And then you have a head coach who's built the most successful system in modern NFL history – And much of it is predicated on the knowledge and the emotionless um, tenet of moving on from players a year early rather than a year late. And so in a weird way, this was just always going to happen. There was a tension between a system and Tom Brady's goals that made this kind of inevitable. And more than ego, more than dysfunction, yeah, there's some tension and there's some iciness right now between these guys. But at the end of the day, both of them stood their ground, and it's you've got to kind of respect it in a weird way. It seems human, but it also seems ridiculous. Is this really about who deserves the credit for making the other one a champion? I don't know. I don't think that that's it, and I'll tell you why. Our colleague Jeff Darlington, who's been all over this story, said on the air the other day that he didn't think that Brady was looking to resume pad by going to the Bucks, which might seem like a pretty obvious <laughs> Pretty obvious decision. But, you know, this isn't about necessarily the race to the seventh ring. He wanted to be appreciated. He wanted to have fun. He wanted to just do something different. And you have Bill Belichick, who will always want to win no matter, you know, when he goes out, no matter who's playing. And, you know, he's built an entire dynasty largely based on the idea that you can plug anybody in at any time and they can figure out a winning game plan within that. And so I don't know how to describe this other than this was just like a complete contrast in extremes. And, you know, this was going to happen. And it's kind of a miracle that it waited this long until it did. Seth Wickersham joining us after 20 years, obviously. Tom Brady leaves New England. And what would you cite as the most egregious examples of him feeling underappreciated? It's the contract. You know, I wrote about it in, you know, I did the story, we, we talked about it in, in, in January of 2018 about some of the issues that were going on in the building. And yes, the Tom, you know, the TB12 method was an issue. And yes, Jimmy Garoppolo was an issue. And yes, the role of Alex Guerrero, Tom's trainer and business partner was an issue. But the biggest issue was that he wanted 
a contract that reflected a commitment to him. He wanted it in 2017. He met with Bill Belichick. He met with Robert Kraft about it many times. It never happened. In, he skipped the entire offseason in 2018, at least the voluntary part of it, and sent a bunch of weird messages you know, in various interviews and in social media about his ambivalence about returning to the Patriots. August 2018, he gets $5 million in new incentives that he never reached. August 2019, he still doesn't get a commitment. He, instead, the team holds its ground, and they want a year-to-year contract. And so he signs it knowing that he can void it at the end of the year and move on if he wants to. And even when him and when Tom and Bill Belichick talked in early March, nobody had changed. He still wanted a two-year commitment without qualifiers, and Bill Belichick still saw him as a year-to-year player. That's it. I mean, I think that at the end of the day, it's like, yes, Belichick's coaching style can be grating and gets annoying, but he's been through that. He knows what it's about. He wanted – uh, a contract that reflected a commitment to him for the next couple of years, and the Patriots simply were not willing to give it to him. So if the Patriots offer him the same contract that the Bucks just gave him, do you think Tom Brady is still a Patriot? And I ask that because I wonder, Maybe. Seth, how much yeah. – well, I wonder how much uh, of this is about, hey, my, my legacy is already solidified. I'm the greatest quarterback ever. My final two seasons, I just want to play – with some great skill position guys around me and just have some fun and not have so much tension. Yeah, maybe. I mean, but I just don't know. I mean, I think that, you know, I think the contract was the biggest thing and the relationship between him and Belichick was kind of wrapped up in it also. And so, you know, you Albert Breer had a note about it today in his column in Sports Illustrated saying that, you know, Brady was not going to beg for his job back and Bill was not going to, welcome him back with open arms and and tell him how much he loved him. I mean, these guys just don't operate that way. And after what they've accomplished in the NFL, you kind of can't blame them. But, you know, I think those were like the biggest factors. And like, I don't know if it's someone to blame or someone to not blame in this as much as it's just kind of life. I mean, Robert Kraft was just not going to try to force a marriage at the end of the day. But he did, right? He was forcing a marriage earlier than that. You were the one who yeah. initially reported all the Garoppolo yeah. stuff. That it seems, it seems fairly obvious that uh, that Brady went over Belichick's head to stay there a couple of years beyond where it is that Belichick wanted him there. No. Well, I think that you know the Patriots have a ruthless internal system of how they grade players, and you know our colleague, you know Connor, wrote about it in his book a couple of years ago on Bill Belichick, where. You know, they felt like they could win a Super Bowl with 15 or so quarterbacks in the NFL. You know, that's just the way that they believe is that they're, they're, they can find a winning game plan no matter who is at quarterback. And so, you know, Tom Brady changed Bill Belichick's life and legacy. And I think that he – I think that Bill appreciated Tom as a player and also valued him at what they valued him at, and that was as a year-to-year player. And – there's no question that he saw Jimmy Garoppolo as a potential successor and, you know, might have liked to cross that bridge. But, you know, Jimmy didn't want to sign there. Kraft sided with Tom Brady. And, you know, Tom was still playing at a pretty high level at that point and, and didn't necessarily give his job up. And so, you know, Robert Kraft made it clear to reporters that, you know, he was going to stay out of this, and this was Belichick's negotiation to handle. And I found it very interesting that when Tom Brady came over to Robert Kraft's house a week ago tonight, Kraft said publicly that he assumed that Brady was coming over to quietly get a deal done like they had done in the past, just the two of them. I found that a fascinating comment, one of those moments where you accidentally tell the truth, you know? What else did you find interesting about some of the reporting of the last week? Well, I think it's still being sorted out, and I think the story will still be told, you know, about, you know, how big of a market Tom Brady actually had. I mean, it still seems weird to say, but the Tennessee Titans, that seemed like a a perfect match for Tom Brady, picked Ryan Tannehill over Tom Brady. I mean, that's still an odd sentence to say. Um, You know, the Colts looked at Tom, but they never really got involved. The 49ers had a discussion about it, but they – never really got involved. And at the end of the day, Brady had three offers. He had from the Bucks, the Patriots, and the, and the Los Angeles Chargers. 
personally, I always thought he was going to go to someplace huge. I thought that his life required him to be someplace big. He can go to Spago in, in Beverly Hills, and nobody cares that he's there. Whereas in Tampa, you know, he'll get standing ovations everywhere he goes. But I think the geography of Tampa made sense. I think Bruce Arians just being more of like a laid-back coach made sense for him. And his wife, at the end of the Facebook docuseries a couple years ago, Tom versus Time, said, you know, Tom just wants to be in a place where he's appreciated and he has fun. And I think that even though we dissected those words, I think we underestimated how much he really wanted to feel appreciated, i.e. have a contract that reflected a commitment to him, and have fun. And it sounds like two things that aren't unreasonable to ask, but if you're asking them of Bill Belichick's New England Patriots and you're a 42-year-old quarterback, you're probably asking the impossible. <laughs> you nailed the dismount. Uh, thank you for being on with us, Seth. Appreciate the reporting, sir. My pleasure, guys. Stay safe. Uh, we will get to Stugatz's weekend observations in a second, but first we're asking you to support the sponsors who support us, Advance Auto, Spart, uh, Advance Auto Parts. They have the parts that you need to keep your car running most well. Tell them, Stugatz. Yep, now more than ever, it's important to think ahead. Advance Auto Parts remains open to help you keep your car up and running at its best. Order online and then pick up in the store so you can get in and out as quickly as possible. Car batteries are in stock. They're starting at just $79.99. They'll test your old battery and install your new one for free. No appointment necessary. Enter the code DAN20 when you buy online, and you'll save an extra 20%. That's DAN20 when you buy online. Think ahead. Think advance only at Advance Auto Parts. Don Lebertard. I heard the hotel industry is moving away from providing shampoo and soap. Oh, don't get me started on them. Yeah? Do not get me started on hotels and oh, the stuff guys, that they don't get do. Right. What they take from me, I feel like I'm entitled to take something I mean, from them. Thank you, the Billy. They're going to yes. throw away the shampoo. They're going to throw away the soap. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about the sheets, and I'm talking about the towels. Stugats. Oh, we really care about the environment, so please hang up your towels. And get out of here. You just don't want to wash these towels because it's going to cost you money to wash these towels. All right? This whole thing about you're saving the whales or you're saving the turtles or whatever because I put my towel on a hanger it is so full of it. All right? You just don't want to give me fresh towels every day. Just call it what it is. Tell me you don't want to give me fresh towels. I'm still going to throw it on the floor. All right? I feel like water is a renewable resource. And you're not really saving the ocean by using water to clean my towel, are you? Am I missing something? What am I missing? Nail right on the head. <laughs> am I missing something? <laughs> the end of the story. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. If you missed any of our interviews, check them out on demand in the Dan Lebatar Podcast brought to you by Capital One Quicksilver. Earning unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase everywhere. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Dan, it's time for Straight Talk. It is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. It is also time for Stugatz's Weekend Observations. Bristol, please play the open here, and we hope that you could keep up with the beeps from up there because we've lost our library, our ability to hit any of our tools. So, Bristol, play the opening for Stugatz. It is time for Stugatz to share his game notes. No one in the media will tell you what happened better than my boy Stu. Dan... I had no idea I needed it until I did. Rock skimming. Marble runs. Skipping. It's skipping, Dan. <laughs> Slippery stairs. Dan, ESPN The Ocho is back. Every time I walk upstairs, I think I have the coronavirus. Does that happen to you when you walk up a uh, set of stairs, Dan? You're breathing heavy? I, I wish that wasn't one of the symptoms. I really do. Seven hours of watching Brady win Super Bowls. Go bleep yourselves. I'm still confused why we don't at least have golf. We are living in a world of awkwardness. This is what it would be like if everyone was like Dan. What happened? The, <laughs> the Blue Jays president. What happened? I, uh, truth. The uh, truth is what uh, happened. I'm glad you said it earlier. I was nervous to put that one in there. 
The Blue Jays president said they would need at least a month to get ready if there was regular season baseball. Blue Jays president, you're not curing cancer. You play a game with a bat and a ball. Also, who the hell is the Blue Jays president and why do we care what he says? Really confused when the federal government tells me to not get tested when I don't have symptoms and a third of the Nets test positive with no symptoms. Just realized that Tom Brady Super Bowls aired on ESPN. What a great idea. Tom Brady signed his contract with the Bucks. Not the happy ending Bob Kraft has become accustomed to. Didn't you just tell people to go bleep themselves for playing all the Patriots Super Bowls? Didn't you? Yeah, just do that? I did. I was yeah, but I, I didn't realize I was telling our bosses to go bleep themselves, and then I realized <laughs> I was watching it on ESPN, and now I'm telling our bosses, "Hey, fantastic okay, great idea. idea! Okay, very good. Yeah. See what see what's going on there now, Dan? Excellent. A great idea. I mean, all the Brady Super Bowl victories. How about that? Back to back. I was watching the Seahawks one. I still can't believe that Pete Carroll did not hand the ball to Marshawn Lynch. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Thank you. There's a professional stone skipper named Mike Alibi. Has a great nickname. You, of course, know what it is, right, Dan? <laughs> that is, it's I don't know. airtight alibi. <laughs> awesome. Mike Alibi, you ain't winning the sco- uh, the stone skipping championships if you aren't willing to put your feet in the water. Airtight. <laughs> desperate times call for desperate measures. On Tuesday. ESPN will celebrate Peyton Manning's birthday with a five-hour special. Hashtag COVID-19. Jameis Winston, what happened there? Hashtag. Who puts hashtags in the game notes? (laughs) Mike, was that you? Jameis Winston tweeted out, it's been a great five seasons as a Buccaneer. If 32 and 48 and 88 interceptions and 70 starts is great, then yep (laughs) it was great Jameis went on to tweet i look forward to seeing you all again in february hashtag super bowl whatever it is sblv is that 51 five i don't know Jameis, i might see you on the field or i might see you but it won't be on the field unless you sign with the patriots then not only will I see you on that field in Tampa, but I'll see you in Canton. Dan, you know what Bill O'Brien's been doing during the coronavirus outbreak? Trading his best player. He's been skating, Dan. <laughs> I've washed my hands more this weekend than I have over my entire life. Death, taxes, and the Patriots signing Brian Hoyer. Darius Slay, after being traded by the Lions, of course was quick to tell us he's lost respect for Matt Patricia. Darius, do me a favor. Lose respect for him and tell us while he's still coaching you. Otherwise, I don't care. Thanks. Dan, when you have children. <laughs> Chris has been laughing at how poorly you're reading this. He's not laughing at what it is that you're saying. He's laughing. At <laughs> I'm reading it perfectly and slowly because I'm trying to keep up with it. Hashtag COVID-19. I mean, desperate times call for desperate measures. Hey, uh, Chris, thank you for being the only person, and, and please include the beep. When I asked for weekend observations, Chris, thank you for being the only person on the show who sent me any. Uh, Do your own work. We're all, in this, work. We're all like, in this together. Your, we're not in this together. The weekend observations uh, are yours. It's uh, not Chris Cody's weekend observations. I've been Do your own the, work. 
he outsourced his funniest thing for the sports weekend. This is the first time in history show history of Israel. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Dan, when you have children throughout life, there are these special moments when you sit back, smile, and enjoy the satisfaction of knowing you raised them correctly. Over the weekend, I showed one of my daughters the Jordan 63-point playoff game against the Celtics. When it was over, she said, Bristol. She didn't say Bristol. She said, Dad, he's so much better than LeBron. Dan, that was one of those moments. I raised her well. Jamal Murray, Instagramming an appropriate, uh, inappropriate video, then quickly deleting it. Had he play. Oh. With Tom Brady, not what happened there. I mean, jeez, how did that even get in there? I mean, it's, not, it's not the version I said to Michael. I mean, it's because Chris Cody wrote it for you. With Tom Brady now signed with the Bucks, people are making claims of a tampering trail. And Dan, you know what the Bucks are trying to do with that trail, right? No, They're trying stats. to throw dirt on it, Dan. Okay. That's what makes it a trail. PGA, please play virtual masters. I'm begging you. No one goes behind the scenes with the Patriots more than Seth Wickersham. Sometimes a friend will say, hey, where's Seth? And the other friends will say, don't worry. He's behind the scenes with the Patriots. He lives there. His mail gets delivered to Gillette Stadium. Publix has become nothing but a series of awkward eye and head exchanges. Pro Football Talk headline report. The Raiders were sniffing around Brady as late as this week. I love a good sniffing around, but what the hell does that mean? Speaking of hell, our Bryles. Dan, those are the weekend observations. I can't believe we haven't talked about Jamal Murray. We will do that next and also check in with a legal expert about some of these NFL contracts. That is Straight Talk. It is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Everything for less, solely at Walmart. Don Lebatard. Earlier in the show, the question was asked, what would Stugatz do with one invisible day? Stugatz. One day where he could be invisible. We decided that during banking hours, he would choose a weekday. He would rob all the banks in the universe from 8 to 5. And then at night, he would alter sporting event results by right. being an invisible man in games he had bet on. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Ryan Smith going to join us in just a minute here on the Shell Penzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. The Patriots have signed Brian Hoyer to a one-year deal. Suspended Cowboys defensive end Randy Gre- uh, Gregory has filed for reinstatement. And finally, Bonnie Von Duke and Emmer Kinsella. Full-time professional violin players took to an empty toilet paper aisle in Los Angeles wearing high-vis life jackets. Completely straight-faced, they serenaded the ransacked shelves to the tune of Nearer, My God. To thee, the piece the ship bandmaster plays at the Titanic sinks in James Cameron's 1997 classic. Sports Center is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. Think ahead, think advance. At any time, one in four batteries is about to fail. Get a free battery test and free installation with any automotive battery purchase only at Advance Auto Parts. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in to Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Guillermo, put it on the poll at Lebetard Show. Every time you see an NBA player trending, do you assume they have the coronavirus? I've seen it with Grant Hill. I've seen it with Andre Miller. I'm assuming things that are erroneous and then i happened upon jamal murray and i i was like whoa that's uh that's not the coronavirus there we will get to that story in a second but 
uh, Ryan Smith is ESPN's legal analyst. You've uh, seen him on Outside the Lines. And I had a couple of questions about some things going on in the contract world of sports that I was hoping to get answered. So thank you, Ryan, for joining us. A lot of people have found it a bit unseemly that there are coronavirus clauses in these new NFL contracts that will allow some signing bonuses to be forfeited. Can you explain to me what it is that's happening there and um, whether or not it's unseemly or is it just, uh, you know, the cost of doing business? Yeah, guys, uh, it, it's an interesting time, and I think it's a sign of the times, essentially. So what this is is, according to Jeremy Fowler, it's a clause that they are signing with free agents <clears throat> that has a condition on it. And the condition is essentially – hey, we get to, if you've been paid a signing bonus, we might be able to take it back. Or if you're getting a signing bonus, we might not have to pay it to you. Conditioned on an injury guarantee, you would essentially have to pass a physical by a club doctor when the coronavirus restrictions are lifted. So how does this play out? The idea is you got a player who signs a deal right now, and typically the physical happens first and the player signs. But you can't do that now because guys can't travel back and forth to see team doctors. So they'll sign the contract now, And if it's weeks, months, until we can all get together again, they'll take that physical. And there is the very real possibility that if they fail that physical, the team could take away their signing bonus. You're talking about millions of dollars on the line. Now, you ask me if it's unseemly. And I would say this, and this is going to – I hate to sound kind of stark. It's absolutely unseemly morally. During a time like this, this is not the kind of thing we want to see teams doing. You could go to an independent doctor where you are. A team could say, I trust this doctor. It's a third party, and I'm just going to go with what that doctor says and live by that, considering that we're all in uncertain times. But from a business perspective, if, if I'm representing the league, this would have been a contract clause that I came up with because I would say, look, my job is to protect you, league, and the best way to do that, you know these guys want to sign contracts. They want big money contracts. If we can get them to agree to this by contract, We create a really tough situation for them to try to break out of the CBA and sue on. So if we can do it, why not do it? And we don't have to take away the money, but at least it gives us the option. Why wouldn't the players union fight that? I think they might fight it when something happens. I think right now it's a little unclear who is signing what, but one of the problems I think the players union might have right now is you're talking about a player and their representative. And if the representative is agreeing to that, let's say I'm getting a three-year, $30 million deal. If I want that deal and I'm agreeing to that contract, that that kind of limits in some ways what the Players Association can do. Do you want a team saying to you, all right, you're not going to sign it, then I'm going to sign the next dude up, and I'm going to give him three years, 30, and you're not going to get it, and you take your chances with another team. That's part of the problem of negotiating contracts in this time. You can always go to somebody else. And I'm not sure, and again, I'm not speaking for them, but I'm not sure if the Players Association wants to get involved in what players and their representatives negotiate individually with teams. Ryan, when the play, you said when the players fight it, I'm wondering when they do fight it, what will the argument be? Yeah. How would you, if you were representing the players, what would you be saying on their behalf? Yeah, I would. Try. I, it, it's a tough call, but you can always find arguments that can work in your favor. The first thing I got to figure out, Stu, is can I get out of the CBA? in terms of litigating this thing. And that's going to be a tough one because a lot of these things will go, will have to stay within the NFL. But if I could somehow get a court to hear this, one thing I would argue is interference with business relations. I might say, Hey, by signing me to this contract, they, and then, and then essentially taking my money away later, they cost me millions of dollars that I could have gotten from somebody else, but I chose to have good faith in these folks that they wouldn't do this. The problem is they signed a contract. So I'd really be struggling to find terms that I could try to figure out for the players to defend this. Of course, you can always make the argument. And, and I think we're going to, guys, be an interesting, in an interesting time when it comes to courts, if you can get this out of the CBA. Because I think there's courts that are going to look at this period of time in our society and say, maybe we need to try to figure out a different way to do things than just saying, well, you signed a contract, and that's what it says. So that's one of the claims I would say. I, I would try to say, can I bring this to a court and argue that I signed this on reliance that they would rely on my physical condition. And even though this contract says this, is there a chance that a court will break out of that? But, but again, you sign a contract and it's a hard thing to break. Ryan Smith with us on ESPN radio, according to a league memo shared with teams Friday. And according to Woj, the NBA plans to deliver 
full salaries due on April 1st, but left open the possibility of recouping future salaries for canceled games on April 15th. What do you make of that? Yeah, that's a, that's this is a really tough issue that you guys are going to see over and over again coming up with sports leagues. And, and here is the bottom line. The NBA is in uncharted waters. And in a lot of these CBAs and deals, and this is also what Woj pointed out as well, they have these sort of force majeure clauses. This, this essentially, in layman's terms, hey, an event has happened that's so extreme that it suspends our obligation to do what we should be doing by a contract. So in a sense, an act of God, a pandemic, something extreme that we never could have planned for, like this. So if you're in a situation and you're the NBA and you're losing a lot of money, you might be willing to say PR-wise, hey, we're going to pay these guys to this date. But you got to reserve the right to say, if this keeps going and going and going and players are owed money, do I have a way to suspend my obligation to them? And that's the obligation they can suspend. Now, now here's the thing. you got to kind of look at it almost as a nuclear option because imagine the PR damage and everything else that comes with it from not paying the likes of LeBron James and, and Kawhi Leonard and all these other guys. That's not something the league wants to face. So for them, it's better to put out, yeah, we're paying and not say anything about the future until you have to deal with that future. Because can I give it to you from the league perspective as well? They've got, look at how their money comes in, TV deals, sponsorships, all of that. Those groups are going to be making the same claims when the league say to them, pay up. And that's why the leagues are already looking at facing losses of hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars because of this. So if the league doesn't have the money from those sources, how can it pay the players? So their best move, I think, right now is what they're doing, saying, we're paying, but we're not going to say anything about the future. Right now, we're paying. What a mess. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate the time, sir. Thank you for making it. Uh, We will talk about the Jamal Murray story next. Devoured 413 Hooters chicken wings. Stugats. I, I th- glutton. I it's glutton. glutton. It's so bad. It's glutton. And I can't blame Roy there. I'm not going to blame Roy. He spelled it correctly. The commas are there. Everything's there. Um, I'm just an idiot. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. on Twitter because uh, evidently, and he has denied this and claimed that he has been hacked, and I don't know what the truth is, although, Guillermo, I would like for you to put on the poll, please, at Lebetard Show, uh, did you uh, hunt down and watch the Jamal Murray video? Uh, because what are you donting me about? Why are you donting me? Mike Ryan just made the uh, made the face. Um, let's not put that. Let's not have America weigh in to see if they the 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 woman that's in this video has begged people to delete the video. Oh, I didn't see the video. I didn't. I don't even know what the video is. I just know that he uh, that he well, either accidentally or was or he was hacked. There is a sex act of some sort that uh, that ended up on his Instagram live. What do you got? Stu Gantz. Well, you don't apologize if you shouldn't apologize if you were hacked because you're a victim. You didn't do anything wrong. Someone took the video and put it on your account. So it is odd that he's apologizing. But Mike is right. Like this morning, his girlfriend is asking people, hey, if you got that video and a lot of people did, please delete it. And I would tell her that some people will. Most people are idiots and they will not. I'm just telling her right now. That's um, I, but I didn't feel the need in any way to hunt that down. I did not know that there was a shaming involved with this until Mike Ryan, uh, you know, made a face. But I don't know what the video is because once I saw that it was trending, that was the end of my interest. Just sort of like, how does this happen? Does somebody like I don't know because I'm not on Instagram. I don't actually know how this could even happen. I don't know how it is that you would accidentally have a sex act on your social media account you could potentially try to send it to someone in particular um someone privately and then you accidentally post to your own story and then that's how something like that could happen 
Okay, but what about his claim that he was hacked? That uh, I guess that's I not. I don't know great. if that's um, an airtight alibi. <laughs> Especially when you apologize for being hacked. <laughs> um, and so when something like that happens at 2.30 in the morning, it caught, it, it caught pretty fast in terms of spreading all over the place. And now, forgive me for this, Mike, because I don't, I don't know uh, what his girlfriend is claiming, but it becomes much more difficult to claim when you're hacked. I assume that it might not have actually been his girlfriend, that it might have been a video of someone else or something else. Um, yeah. I'm not uh, I'm not jumped into the conclusion that it's a girlfriend. I just know that there is someone, a Twitter account resembling the person that is purported to be in that video begging people to take down the video, delete it if they have it, delete it if they saved a, a screen cap of it as it was out on Instagram for a little bit. But yeah, there there's there's an actual person involved here. There's two people involved here that had a private video go out publicly as it was not intended to be so, so they are victims of this. But I am curious of the human condition. So while it is that I'm not the one who made them trend, I understand that uh, your objection to me bringing it up now, but I'm actually interested in how it is that human beings behave in that circumstance because it's not something that I had, and I'm not sitting here trying to be morally superior. It's just not something that I had any interest in seeing once... uh, once this is out there and it's a source of something that he is claiming to be hacked on, like, why? I don't really want – my curiosity doesn't lead me down the path, and so I'm actually curious in terms of our audience whether or not people are more like me or like some, that they're more inclined to actually find it because of some sort of curiosity. These are, these are one of those scientific polls that I really don't want to see the data on. I don't want to know that about our audience. You don't want to know that about <laughs> no, people? No, I don't want it out there. I don't want to be accused of stoking some sort of flame. I'm good just saying this is a thing that happened and that's in the past. What are you going to see? Let's see if people are more like me or more like Stugatz. I felt you going in that direction. I did not go in that direction. Well, because, no, because here's the thing. When I was discussing it, when I was discussing it with you guys during the break, all six of you fell out of the camera screen when I started asking you questions. I'm sitting there asking you, all six of you, I'm asking, hey, what happened here? Can you guys explain to me what it is that happened here? And all six of you said, nobody, I couldn't put this on anybody because none of of you claim to have watched it, Dan, Dan, but all of you vanished from my screen. Why are we talking about this? Usually, you like the the big, the meaty. Let me let me rephrase. You like the societal questions. What societal questions are we asking about this? Really, I'm curious about the lecture. Uh, we're just rubbernecking again. I'm it terrible was, with phrasing. It was like a game of hot uh, hot potato. I mean, I took the topic and I passed it along to Chris Cody. I wanted nothing to do with it. <laughs> you guys, you guys, so fled the premises. There was actually, I asked the question, "Are we going to discuss this?" And you got, you're like, "Who, who, who's going to discuss this?" And I'm like, "The people I do a radio show with." I'm tired of the Rams. I'll tell you right now. Because here's what, and it happened with Golden State too, okay? These teams who have been lousy forever, all of a sudden they get good. I mean, I had the Warriors begging me to put guests on these shows before they became any good. We talked to Monta Ellis so many damn times for no good reason. Stugatz. And then they become good and you can't get someone on. I'm trying to get Sean McVay on. But McVay is slightly busy now and the world, surprisingly, doesn't revolve around you. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Mike Leach expected to join us in just a minute here on the Shell Penzo Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. Blue Jays president Mark Shapiro says that he thinks Major League Baseball would need at least a month of workouts and exhibition games before regular season play can begin. La Liga, following a meeting with the Royal Spanish Football Federation, has announced the indefinite suspension of professional football in Spain because of the coronavirus pandemic. And finally, Chicago's Shed Aquarium, who closed due to the coronavirus pandemic, shared a series of adorable videos on Twitter of their rockhopper penguins on a field trip as they wandered around the zoo with their keepers. 
the video show the three inquisitive birds wellington edward and annie hobbling around the aquarium's ground including looking at the fishes on display as its amazon rising exhibit that's at i'm not blaming anyone it's not a fine but it should read at not as i'm just saying Take advantage of Casper's end of season clearance sale with savings up to 20%. Get the meetings, uh, the mattress, the meetings. That's on me. It's actually spelled mattress. It's spelled correctly. Get the mattress of your dreams at Casper.com now through March 24th. Terms and conditions apply. See Casper.com slash terms. I'm sorry, Roy. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Guillermo, put it on the poll. Has this been a particularly bad reading day, even what? by Stugatz's lowered standards? I don't even understand. I mean, at Lebetard Show, um, for those of you wishing to pile on to Bill O'Brien for the DeAndre Hopkins trade, uh, just know that Brandon Cooks, uh, not once but twice, was traded for a first round. <laughs> for a first round pick that's something that has happened two times and bill o'brien was not able to get a first round pick for deandre hopkins we are endeavoring to find mike leach uh, i'd like to resume our daily phone calls with him because they are fun uh joy rides uh through uh animal kingdoms the spirit world and everything else but before we do that chris cody who uh is nothing if not a very willing oaf. Uh, He is always willing to take swings. He told us that he had something for us uh, this weekend. He was busy cooking it up. And so he has a new segment that we need uh, to begin for you. So Bristol, go ahead and play Chris Cody's imaging so we can all find out together uh, if you have it, uh, if so, we can all find out together. We'll find out together right now whether Br- Bristol even has the imaging. Let's find out together. Okay, Bristol does not have the imaging. Okay, hashtag COVID nineteen. <laughs> um, that's my fault. Mike was asking for it during the break, and uh, Bristol was outside of our reach because we're in the communication business, and sometimes the communication ends up breaking down uh stugat uh have there been five good football movies has america made five good football movies <laughs> really uh yes. remember the titans I, I mean hold on hold on i have to what? tell you what happened there i was trying to get their attention during the break hey do you guys have the 90s hockey player of the day thing very clearly not getting back to me so i tell dan let's not go to it and then dan goes to it so, oh. in the modern era of communication, we can't get much better than A and B, but Dan presses on. America, five good football movies. Yes or no, Stu Gatz? Uh, I would say, yeah, we have five good football movies. I mean, Unnecessary Roughness is certainly one of Come them. Come on, man. You can't start with Mike, that. You Mike. can't start with Unnecessary Roughness, Stu Gatz. I'll back you up. And expect I me started to take with you Remember seriously. the Titans, and then I brought it to uh, Unnecessary Rep. Now, Remember the Titans is great. Let's say it's two hours. The first hour and 50 minutes, one of the best movies I've ever seen. I am with you for the last five minutes. It's totally unbelievable. That play would never work as a final play of a game in which a team would win. That coach would get fired. Coach Boone would have been fired for calling that play. Uh, so I have Remember the Titans and Unnecessary Roughness. Mike, you agree with me there, right, on the, on the second one? Oh, yeah, I'll back you up. <laughs> would right, be in my top five, but it's fine. But you can't it's have, a, it's, it's I have the replacements. Oh, come on. I'll put it on the poll, Guillermo. Has America made five good football movies and also is unnecessary roughness one of them? Like, you got to get yep. out of here with that. Yep. The replacements is another one. Rudy, of course, very good. Little Giants is exceptional. Uh, Friday Night Lights was pretty good. Does the last Boy Scout count? Oh, wow. Shelly Marcone. Uh <laughs> Yeah, it counts, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're playing that's football. That's Granted, someone five. pulls out a gun and shoots his opponent, but they are playing football. I mean, <laughs> first that's of how all, the 90s, that's how the '90s Hurricanes did it. Wait a minute, how could the Last Boy Scout be a football movie? There's just one scene where there's a gun pulled out during play. That doesn't count as a football I movie. I think in the movie yeah. poster, Damon Wayans is holding a football, so therefore, it's a football movie. Right, and that scene was on an actual football field, and therefore, football movie. Okay, right. so, so if there's a football anywhere in a movie, it's a foot. That's it. It's a football movie. That's the way that we're doing the definition of that. What do you have, Roy? It's unnecessary roughness. It's fine. Uh, what? 
What is I'm it? sorry, Mike. I'm sorry. Uh, this has been a disaster of a segment, and it's and my I'm fault. Also, and I'm also sorry because I was writing a note to you saying, hey, we can go to the hockey open. Oh, great. Let's and, go. Let's but, but, but when you tossed to Roy, I threw my headsets at the wall trying to get there in time because you sprung it on me, and I what it resulted in me writing on your wall. I'm not going to make it. I'm just not going to make it. I'm going to go ahead we're and all announce in this to together, America. Dana. No, no, we're not going to be in it together soon. It's going to be just you right. guys very soon. I'm oh, not going to make it anymore doing the show this way. Go ahead and play the imaging, Bristol. Hey, everybody, get out of the way. It's time for Roy's 90s Hockey Player of the Day. Take it away, Roy. He was drafted 86 overall by the Vancouver Canucks in 1990. Played 605 games, scored 64 goals, 73 assists, 137 points, and had 2,567 penalty minutes and 148 fighting majors. He led the league in 1996 in penalty minutes. Uh, Chris, That's today. I, I can play here today. I appreciate your efforts here, Chris. Chris is breakdancing throughout this trying to cheer me up because I'm guessing I'm going to quit here before 1 uh, Eastern. Uh, let's go ahead and tell the people about ZipRecruiter, Stu Gatz. ZipRecruiter, uh, if you're a business owner, when the time comes to hire a new employee, get some help by using ZipRecruiter. Tell them, Stu Gatz. Yep, we love ZipRecruiter. They've been a sponsor of our show for a while now, and we appreciate their support and loyalty to the show. You may have heard of Dylan Miskowitz. He's been on my podcast. He's a real business owner who struggled with finding the right fit for his director of coffee role until he turned to ZipRecruiter. Well, since then, Dylan's business, Cafe Altura, grew so much that he had to hire a junior roaster and a second director of coffee. A second. How about that? How? Once again, through ZipRecruiter, ZipRecruiter's matching technology finds the right people for your job and invites them to apply. Four to five employers to post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. To try ZipRecruiter for free, it's simple. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Dan. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Dan. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Journalist at ESPN is leaving. Jeremy Schapp would like a word. But nobody ever said the call letters better than Jeremy Schapp. Back when they used to sign off with that, I'm Jeremy Schapp. ESPN. That's true. Oh, Chris, Rachel <laughs> yes. Nichols would like to have a word. Oh, that's right. Stugatz. Put it on the poll, Guillermo. Who says the letters ESPN <laughs> better, Jeremy Schapp or Rachel Nichols? Why did they stop doing that? Let's bring that back. All right, you bring it back. I will do that. <laughs> okay. I'm Chris Cody, ESPN. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. If you missed any of the show, you can listen to all three hours of the Dan Levitard Show, plus our Miami-only hour and our best of podcast on demand in the ESPN app. And subscribe to the Levitard and Friends podcast network featuring South Beach Sessions, Stupidity, and Mystery Crepe. Please rate and subscribe. New episodes are posted every week wherever you get your podcast. What do you guys imagine was the look that Ben Roethlisberger was going for with, uh, you know, and Ben... Under the best of conditions, Ben has a face that's about as swollen as mine. And now he is headed into his late uh, 30s, and he has just, uh, you know, gone full wilderness on his face. Like, he looks like somebody who's been trapped in a well or a mine for the better part of six months. And he has emerged, and uh, it is a beard that has had no grooming. It is uh, just shrubbery on his face. There's a family of German ch- tourists living in there. Like, it's it's not even Tom Hanks and Castaway. I don't know how to describe it. If the audience hasn't seen what Ben Roethlisberger looks like right now, the answer is not a professional champion quarterback. It is somebody who has gotten <laughs> – it is somebody who has absolutely lost his way, not on the way to winning, lost his way on the way to a happy life. Like, that does not – I don't think that – Anyone who looks like that is someone that you look at and say that is a person who is taking care of themselves. It looks like he's going for Brett Kiesel. I mean, that's what it looks like he's going for. Brett Kiesel's beard, almost to a T, to be honest with you. Well, and also Brett Kiesel's and face, though, and, and that was an <laughs> offensive lineman. Like, he, yes. is, he is looking um, – 
he is looking uh, very round, right? Like uh, ben, ben Ben Roethlisberger looks like somebody who uh, generally, under the best of circumstances in his prime, he looks like somebody who walks around with, uh, you know, a six-pack in his hand. Just uh, that he enjoys his beer. Um, but I, I, I guess that's a good way to describe it for somebody who knows sports. But how about outside of sports? How would you mm. – uh, because it, Tom Hanks in Castaway is the place that people go. Somebody who has been living or who has been uh, on an island by themselves for a while without grooming tools. Um, but it, it, the beard, the the beard is encroaching on his eyesight. The beard is, he is growing hair so high up on his face that um, that it's a little bit it, it's a little bit hard to discern what it is that he's trying to accomplish. <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. I mean, listen, Dan, when you consider it's the off season, when you consider what's going on in our country right now, let's cut the man some slack. I mean, he's just letting it all grow out. And I think, listen, you check back with me in about a month, I'm going to look like Roethlisberger. I promise you. But I think we're all going to look like Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> all right, put it on the poll, Guillermo, <laughs> at Lebetard Show. Are we all going to look like Ben Roethlisberger in six months? But, uh, Sugats, look, you have never been somebody that we around here consider a picture of hygiene. You've been wanting to cut your hair for a month, even though we've got a bit involving your hair where you're going to come in with uh, cornrows into the octagon with Jorge Masvidal, uh, and you've been complaining and your wife has been complaining for the better part of a month. You are not a picture of grooming. You are the worst spokesman in the history of Dollar Shave Club. Every time Thanks. you're talking about Dollar Shave Club, your face is an unholy mess. <laughs> and yet you have never looked as bad as Ben Roethlisberger <laughs> looks right now. A uh, very few human beings ever the have. The nicest thing you've ever said it, to me. <laughs> it's, it's what passes for a compliment. But in the, in the, in the history of human facial hair growth, uh, this is one of the worst things that I've ever seen. I don't know how it can be any worse. You explain to me. You tell me how it is that it can be any worse. You tell me in the history of beards, in the history of mustaches, you give me all the people ever that you have seen. Uh, because if that person, if that person were in a police lineup, you would say, of course, he's in a police lineup. That person doesn't care about anything, not society's rules, not not grooming, <laughs> not uh, how he is presenting himself to others. I think I'd just be like, it was him. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, you would certainly know it was him. It, it would have to be him because nobody else looks like him. Like you would either see somebody who looks like that and you would never forget it. I've never... I have not seen someone who looks like Ben Roethlisberger in all my days uh, roaming the earth, right? Did we lose Dan? Up. Oh. All right, we lost Dan for uh, with internet connection problems. That's great because we don't have a guest on and I can't access any of our production staff. And he left me with a topic, Ben Roethlisberger's beard. Now he's back, though, or we think he's back. This is so confusing. This is very hard to do. <laughs> you We're got so scared. COVID-19. You got so scared. You got so I would love. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm terrified. Because I'm serious. You left me with the worst possible topic. I can't okay. talk to our producers you know the what? way you can. Okay. Okay. And so, like, what else was? Where else was I going to go with Roethlisberger? I left beard? you with and the worst possible topic. Okay. You know what I would like to try right now? No, because don't, don't this... you do that. Don't lash back. Oh no. 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 I'm going to stay here, and I would like you to lead this segment wherever it is. That... Here, I'm going to filibuster right now, so you can think about all the things that you would like to no, talk no, no, about. No, no, because no, no. that's. God, so I've never been envious of you. I've never been envious of you. The last week, I've been envious of you because you're rolling out of bed and you're sitting in front of a microphone and then you're done and you don't think about the show again. While I'm sitting here drowning with no sports, trying to figure out how to talk for five minutes about Ben Roethlisberger's beard. So I would like no, very much, while, right. while I filibuster here, for you to just think for a second about whatever it is that you'd like to talk about. Anything in the world. Is there a sandwich near you you'd like to discuss? Anything in the world. I'd be perfectly happy to listen to what you have for the the next four minutes you have all of our producers at your disposal with varying uh degrees of efficiency on their microphones because it might not work but i am here for you i will support anything that you say the same way that mike supported unnecessary roughness as a nominee by you as one of the top five football movies ever made i will support my whatever it is you're doing all-time sixers team my all-time philadelphia 76ers <laughs> team are you guys ready are yes. you ready? Point guard, Mo Cheeks. This is my all-time team, okay? You want to dispute it, feel free, okay? But it's my all-time team. And it's the team that I put together 
that would give them the best chance of winning in today's NBA. That's the caveat, okay, in today's NBA. So my all-time Sixers team, point guard, Mo Cheeks, shooting guard, Allen Iverson, small forward, Julius Irving, Dr. J, power forward, Charles Barkley, center, Wilt Chamberlain, Wilt the Still. Think of that starting five, Wilt. Barkley, Irving, Iverson, Mo Cheeks. Who do I have coming off the bench? Moses Malone. Moses Malone, who finally got Julius Irving that coveted ring, his championship. Who's my coach? Billy Cunningham. Then you get one for fun. You get a guy off the bench, okay? You get one guy off the bench and then one for fun. My one guy off the bench, as I stated, was Moses Malone. My one for fun Hersey Hawkins, plus I need some three-point shooting. So I got the Hawk and Moses Malone coming off the bench, and then apologies to two, and I spell that T-W-O, okay? Apologies to T-W-O. Andrew Toney, one of the underrated all-time great shooting guards of the 80s, mid-80s, 76ers, and, of course, Bobby Jones, one of the great six men of all time. That is my all-time Philadelphia 76ers team. I'm glad you asked, Dan. <laughs> I uh, I look forward to seeing what uh, what you put together next segment. You've got a whole list of these, right? You've got a whole. Uh, oh, I would the like Pacers to just coming here. up next. <laughs> All right, Pacers next. Challenge just sounds contentious. Let's call it a politely disagree. Ooh, how right. about this? An oopsie. There you go. All right. Put it on the poll. Yes. At Lebitard Show, uh, should a challenge be called an oopsie to placate the referee's ego? An oopsie flag. Stugatz. Or the red flag. The challenge flag should not be called a challenge flag. Or the flag should say on it, love you butt. Red is also yeah. an aggressive color. Very, very aggressive. Very aggressive. Maybe That's pink. Aggressive. We should actually, no, we should have red. them throw daisies and call them whoopsie daisies. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Whoopsie yeah. Good idea. Whoopsie daisies. Yes. <laughs> this is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. wait about 15 minutes for Stugatz's all-time Pacers team, which is probably going to be a little bit harder than his all-time Sixers team. He's been making lists uh, since we were quarantined. That right there is Finnegan. That is uh, Stugatz's dog, Finney. Mike Leach, we've been trying to reach him, uh, and I'd like to talk to him every single day for as long as he'll have us or until time runs out. So Mike Leach is the Mississippi State football coach. And how are you hanging in there, coach? What's going on? Are you quarantined? Are you, you like to go on long walks. Uh, you like to rollerblade as well. Are you are you locked up in your house or are you getting outside? No, I get outside some. I'm in Key West and um, the, uh, you know, because everybody, we sent everybody home, so. Um, and this is the only house I own right now. So, but I'm going to buy one in Starkville and then, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I mean, it's, uh, um, we're not real extreme here, but, um, there's no, no restaurants open other than takeout and, uh, and, uh, you know, you, 
Yeah, the, the thing that surprised me a little bit is they even closed the beaches. I mean, that to me, it seems like fresh air, good exercise, and salt water um, would be good against this stuff. But it's uh, 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 it, it's very quiet down here right now. What is your life like in Key West? Do you uh, do you live on the water? Do you do much in the way of fishing? Uh, no, I'm kind of I'm kind of. Uh, well, I'm about four blocks from Old Town, four blocks from uh, the Gulf, and um, you know, just kind of in, kind of you know, got a bungalow that's sort of in the middle of a block that's, uh, uh, you know, in the middle of those kind of older Victorian-looking houses. And no, it's it's good. It's quiet and and it's quiet, small but private and. Uh, you know, you read, you do your phone calls. That's what you find. You talk about, uh, um, you do a lot of work on the phone. Of course, nowadays, more and more, it's all on the phone and the computer. And the phone and the computer are more or less the same thing. So, uh, but I'll tell you this, uh, as far as uh, decompressing, collecting your thoughts, uh, kind of visualizing and formulating, you know, what's next and, and, uh, you know, organizing uh, uh, how you're going to go about it. Uh, you know, the the most important thing with all this is I think you want to make the most out of your time and make sure that it's beneficial and make sure that, you know, it, it's not just a loss. You may not be doing exactly what you want to be doing, but it can be incredibly productive time. And the other thing, um, even though the family's not right here, uh, with us, it, it's it's kind of, and not just ours, but other people that I've talked to, it's kind of drawn families a little closer together. You know, we'll talk to one another about once a day, check in, you know, how's this, what's that, oh, really, you know, that type of thing. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and then, and then uh, so I do think that, you know, uh, there's a benefit to this if we allow it to be, you know. You love your learning, so are you doing much reading as your as your hold up at home? I'm doing some reading. I'm reading a book on uh, which I don't have the title in front of me. It's one of those uh, nebulous titles that um, um, don't necessarily match the book, but uh, uh, or that you wouldn't think of. Uh, I'm reading a book on a CIA agent and kind of his path. I'm reading a book on Mississippi. I'm re- reading a book. Um, there's another book down there I'm reading. What is it? Um, come and go from the book. Uh, uh, I got kind of a uh, Hemingway book of a collection of uh, stories and people's recollections. And uh, so I kind of read as I go. And then, of course, there's a bunch on the net. I've gotten to where, um, with regard to coronavirus stuff, I make sure that I do not sit in front of the TV because of coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, with information until it drives you crazy. I'm, I, I'll watch, uh, uh, I try to watch one hour uh, a day, just general news. I say news, it's not going to be news, it's going to be coronavirus. That's all it's going to be. Won't be any news, just be coronavirus. And so then I'll try to, you know, get uh, one segment or so with uh, uh, using the fast forward just to make sure I don't miss any key announcements. And then the other thing is, for good or for bad, your, your friends are going to inundate you with one thing after the next. Because um, the the biggest thing that I think is very important is to not let it monopolize your whole day. Go do something productive, uh, you know, whether it's your own thought, meditation, exercise. Great time to get on an exercise routine, which I, um, you know, I always say I'm going to do that tomorrow. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'll get on the bike, make my rounds, go on patrol, you know, so that part's good. Uh, I used to just saddle up and ride around and, uh, I, you know, just, uh, do a loop, do a lap and, you know, make it your business to see what's going on out there, you know? So that's what I tell my wife. I share and get a share and saddle up. We're going on patrol. And, uh, yeah, so, so then she has her gear and saddles up and off we go, you know. (laughs) 
Yeah, you are. Um, the, uh, you know, I, I was the oldest of six, so um, I did know how to cook. And, and to be honest with you, I did know how to cook and, um, uh, and you know, cooked uh, meals not just for myself, but my brothers and sisters, some growing up. Uh, and so when I got to college, I did already know how to cook. Um, the, uh, as far as the cook stuff, um, you know, I, it's, uh, I can't do anything like, uh, uh, there's nothing where you'll say, Oh God, you got to have Mike's, you know, scrambled eggs. I mean, you don't do any of that. I mean, um, they're edible and not, none of it's bad, but none of it's great. I, I actually taught my wife to cook who now has developed into a really good cook, you know, she's um <clears throat> taking some of this stuff and improved on it. She was the she was the youngest of five girls. So she didn't do where I did quite a bit of cooking, she didn't do hardly any. You got five girls and you're the youngest one. I mean, um the cooking role's been filled long before you get up to the stove. So um she you know, so I I, I basically taught her to cook and then it didn't take her long to take over altogether. And then uh I have thought about there's a guy, there's a guy, a, a booster, a Mississippi State booster, um, <clears throat> who's a great cook, does all kinds of the cage and stuff, gumbo, all that stuff, and and uh, he's threatening to teach me to cook, so I probably ought to take him up on that, you know, if I get a chance. Has America made five good football movies, Mike? Uh, probably not. Um, football movies are the hardest ones to make. Um, they're definitely the hardest to make. Football movies are the hardest to make, um, and uh, and by far the most challenging. Doesn't diminish the game at all. Doesn't diminish uh, um, <clears throat> what it takes to play it by any stretch of the imagination. If anything, it illustrates it. Um, you know, the best movies are based for sport movies and baseball book movies and boxing movies. Because you what? can isolate. What, what would you what would you say is the best football movie ever made? I think Friday Night Friday Night Lights, uh, Peter Berg's Friday Night Lights, I think is uh, managed to carry the story. Managed to then the hardest part of all is to identify the people who's doing what. You know because you know just seeing a number, you can't see faces. There's helmets on. Uh, you know the the football movies are fine up until you get. Uh, uh, until you get to where um, there's the action on the field. That's where it gets lost. That's where it gets unclear. That's where, you know, it's hard to throw to show the emotions and things like that. I think that's the best one. Um, you know, and then, uh, oh, the, the oh, what's the old one? You know, the Notre Dame one. That's a good one. That's definitely a good one. About- uh, but foot, football movies are difficult. Uh, which is the m- football movie that you believe has had the most realistic action in it that felt the most like football? Friday Night Lights. Uh, the other one that I thought was good on the sideline, although I didn't like it as much as a movie, and and I think Al Pacino is just a tremendous actor. He was the head coach in it. Um, Given but Sunday. Uh, Al, but but I, I thought he was very miscast. You know, I mean, as I'm actually watching a thing with him in it right now, which is pretty good. Called, called he does a good job in it. Called Hunters, um, uh, called Hunters, and uh, he. Uh, but I, I just didn't see him as a football coach, you know. I, but I thought any given Sunday, there's a scene or two uh, with regard to the intensity of the sideline, the organized confusion. Um, the bright colors and the explosion of uh, the noise and color at the same time on the sideline uh, that I thought really was a really good illustration of what a football sideline and just the the game intensity and trying to sort it out was like. I thought Jim Brown did a really good job as a coach, which was um, you know, you say he's got experience, but well, it's been so many decades. So I thought he was really quite impressive. Uh, I thought, of course, Al, I thought did a great job, except he's, I thought it was just miscast. I thought 
you know, he should be like the, 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 you know, the owner or something like that, you know. Mike, and we're going to call you, we're going to call you again tomorrow, okay? We I want to I want to continue this conversation. If you're on your patrol bike, that's fine. Uh we'll just pick up your phone, okay? Okay? All right, sounds good. You call me tomorrow at 12:30? Sure. 12:30 is when we'll call you. All right. All right, cool. See you. <laughs>Funniest thing from the sports weekend in a second. You might have to wait until tomorrow for Stugatz's all-time Pacers team, even though many of you, I'm sure, were just sticking by your radios in your cars. You were making sure on the Internet to just stick near your uh, your computer. You might have to wait till tomorrow because Mike Ryan, for some reason, just blurted out of nowhere. I'm a big Neil Diamond guy. What were you What were you doing during the break? So, I, as many of you know, I'm a huge Neil Diamond fan. I've seen him in concerts. I rock many concert tees of Neil Diamond. And he abruptly retired in 2018, like in the middle of a tour, because Neil's always touring. In 2018, he was diagnosed with Parkinson's, and he just said, I don't want anybody to see me like this, so he shut it down. And it's been two years since we last saw Neil Diamond, but he took to his Twitter account to pro to perform Sweet Caroline, he reworked the lyrics to uh, say, and say, you know, hands, washing hands, reaching out, not touching me, I won't touch you. So it was good to actually just see Neil Diamond. Forget what you think of Sweet Caroline, the song. I know a lot of people find it annoying, but it was great to just see Neil Diamond with a guitar in his hand out there entertaining and putting out a good message. Guillermo, put it on uh, the poll, please. Sweet Caroline, uh, you love it or annoying song? Let's do funniest thing from the sports weekend. I don't think... We have our imaging in Bristol. Mike, you want to take your shot at uh, just recreating the imaging, or should we just go into it? No. Uh, hey, people, time to figure out what made you laugh this weekend. Ha, ha, ha. Chris, what was the funniest thing from the sports weekend? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Chris, what was the funniest thing from the sports week, sports weekend? I'm going with Philip Rivers giving him uh, an introduction message to Colts fans from his bathroom, <laughs> and, and people were speculating why he'd be in the bathroom, and it's obvious because he needed to get away and quiet from his kids. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> What just happened there in your household? Are you mad? You you seem like you're seething. Who are you mad at? <laughs> your baby? My daughter. My daughter's been good this whole show, and then she <laughs> she chose this time in the last segment, my last moment to speak for the show, to just to throw a fit because she wants Moana on Disney Plus. <laughs> How many times have you seen it? How many times have you seen it? You said you said like ten days ago that you'd already seen it a hundred times. I could recite the entire Moana movie, okay? She, all she I tried to get her to watch Little Mermaid, Lion King. We finally got her on Frozen a little bit, but she cannot get enough of Moana. Recite the whole thing tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow, sure. you can do it. Yes, please do it tomorrow. <laughs> Tony, let's do a recreation tomorrow. We're not going to have anything to talk. Today was our good day in terms of content. We had a whole weekend to prepare for today. Tony, what was the fun? That, yeah, that's right. You, Tony, what do you uh, what do you have? Funniest thing from the sports weekend? Funniest thing from the sports weekend was a surfacing video of Paul Pierce of the McDonald's All Star Dunk Contest, looking like I would if I was in the same dunk contest. <laughs> uh, Roy, Roy, what was the funniest thing from the sports weekend? Rita Wilson covering the entire song "Hip Hop Hooray" by Naughty by Nature. <laughs> How about you, Billy? What do you got? 
Yesterday on the Ocho Dan at 8 a.m., the 2019 Ideal Electricians National Championship. <laughs> you want to say that again? Say it one more time. The 2019 Ideal Electricians National Championship from Orlando, where we found out who the greatest electrician was in America. What are we going to be airing in three months if we're still stuck in this position? What are we going to be doing? In two days, we're airing Manny Perkins. <laughs> uh, Mike, what was the funniest thing from the sports weekend? <laughs> I'm back. Uh, I am turning to all sorts of uh, new places that make me feel really old to get my entertainment on. And I finally discovered what Twitch is all about to watch Myers Leonard take on Ben Simmons in Call of Duty. And I didn't know what was going on. But thanks to Calvin Harris, who did a live DJ set on Twitch. So me, the funniest thing is me resorting to all sorts of things on Twitch, all sorts of things on Twitch to gamble on because there's a FIFA tournament going on called the Quarantine and uh, I am uh, I am heavy into that. Roma just went down. They were a minus 700 favorite. And Walsall is the true Cinderella, and the slipper still fits. Stugatz, he's been scratching himself. He's just been scratching. He's got the uh, crack addicts uh, gambling itch. What was the funniest thing from the sports weekend for you, Stugatz? Uh, yes, as you continue to not understand it, because he's – and what – but, but, yeah, I know, but why do you keep ignoring the interceptions? I don't understand why you don't understand that as 21 quarterbacks have single-digit interceptions, that he threw 40 bleeping interceptable passes last year. That's why nobody wants him. They don't want him. <laughs> yeah, so of course you do. Um, I can't. I want to go. I want to go with Ben Roethlisberger here and his face. Um but then I remember what happened with Jamal Murray. 